Well, hello everybody. Hope you guys have been enjoying this series, learning new games, having some fun. Um, if you'd like something a little more meaty, you can check the uh, one of the videos I got down there, Mixed Game Clinic, right? A little taste, you can watch Mixed Game Clinic. Mixed Game Clinic hand number one, or you can watch the entire final table that myself and Jason Somerville broke down. Um, we went over every hand with a fine tooth comb, lots of deep strategy there. So hopefully these you know, videos here inspire you to explore. Now, we're gonna take a like blast, like, look in history in a way, because when I started playing poker, the most popular form of poker was the following, Limit Hold'em, okay? No Limit Hold'em wasn't played in cash games. It was uh, played occasionally in tournaments, you know, and you'd Play them here and there, but even the tournaments were limit hold'em. When the uh, Party Poker Million many years ago had their thing on the boat, it was limit hold'em. I remember because I got heads up with Eric Lincoln and he beat me. <laughs> I do my own sound effects. How you like that? Um, so limit hold'em. Well, it, it's a really really fun game. I love the game. Uh, a lot of people frown upon it, especially no limit hold'em players, because you know they want to be able to bluff and move all in, and that's not what really the game is about. Okay, and we'll talk about that. Uh, a little further. First and foremost, before we get there, let's get the nitty gritty out of the way. Limit Hold'em works just like No Limit Hold'em, except they're structured betting, right? So if you're playing 100, 200, the blinds would be 50, 100, the raise is to 200, to 300, to 400, and there's a maximum of a bet, depending which casino you're playing, either a bet in three raises or a bet in four raises. Um, and a lot of the time they do that because if you've got a third guy in the middle, you can keep rope doping him, you know, keep making him pay for his draw, just like keep them spinning so there's a limit to how much damage you could do especially if you were colluding with a buddy of yours or something bad like that no no it's a no no you know one of the things i love about limit hold'em is it's fast action you don't see tanking people don't just i mean i've seen a little bit here now but you don't see people like after 45 seconds and just there's a punch in the face we're gonna work on this by the way we're gonna we're, we're working on this younger generation speeding their asses up because i can't handle it no more i'm gonna punch i'm gonna start punching i got muscles now i'm gonna use them Okay, sorry. So, ahead of time, if you're at my table and you're taking too long, just it's a friendly thing. It's a love tap. It's a punch in the face just to remind you guys like to speed up a little bit, okay? So, with love. It's punches with love. That's what we're going with. All right, so let's talk some strategy, all right? So, obviously, when you can't move all in on people, there's going to be some differences in terms of the way you should play hands. In No Limit Hold'em, a lot of situations where a player raises and you call just to see the flopping position. You know, maybe you have like a a uh, jack 10 suited or you have like a pair of eights or a pair of sevens and you don't necessarily want to you know three bet the hand you want to see a flop in limit hold'em i'm going to say this for most of you with i would say almost as a rule you should always three bet if you're going to play okay there are situations where you don't necessarily need to do that one of those being the button raises you're in the big line you don't have to three bet from there but if you are in position player raises in front of you and you do, you do decide to play the hand you should three bet Basically 100%, okay? Now, if you're a really, really good player and you're gonna to look to be exploitative in certain situations, there are some situations where I would advise calling, but we're not gonna get into that because this video is not gonna be four hours long and talk about every specific situation where calling is better. General rule, you're never gonna go wrong by three betting. Um, one of the specific hands that plays very differently then would be small pairs, right? So two sixes typically, you know, raise under the gun, you're in middle position playing deep. You can see a flop with it in no limit hold'em, sure, right? Whereas in limit, if you're gonna play the sixes or even deuces, you three bet it, okay? I know that sounds crazy, but if it, it, so a hand like deuces, if a guy raises next to the button, for example, in the cutoff, the hijack, the steal in place, right? And you're the button with deuces, calling is the worst option of the three. You can fold if you think the guy's super nitty, but I'm, I think that's kind of nitty to fold a pair there. But what you don't wanna do is play the hand three or four-handed, okay? Deuces, small pairs play worse against, you know, two other opponents or three other opponents. Ideally, you either want to play them heads up or against five or more opponents. Against five or more opponents, you're getting a really juicy price to flop your set. Against one opponent with a pair, well, you're just the favorite. If he's got ace-jack, you're pretty much going to get to the river most of the time. So, you know, you just have the advantage of having the best hand. Yes, deuces is a favorite over ace-jack. You guys didn't know that? Come on, man. Do some math. I'll teach you. Yeah, flip the coin. Just do it the old-fashioned way. Take a pen and pencil and run it out. One guy gets deuces, one guy gets ace-jack. That's how Doyle Brunson used to do it back in the day, before all this software and stuff, right? I sound like one of the old guys. All these kids today with their software and spreadsheets and all that crap. All right, let's move to the flop now, okay? One of the other key differences you'll see between no limit hold'em and limit hold'em is how to play a pair, okay? When you play a pair in limit hold'em, you should be playing it uber-aggressively. I don't care which pair. Pair is a pair where I came from, you're going to be much more aggressive than you would be uh, in No Limit Hold'em. You know, say for example, a hand that comes Queen-10-6 with two hearts, right? Um, and you have Ace-Queen. 
okay? Now in no limit hold'em, you get check raised here, you're like, whoa, scared, you know? It's all the stuff you could have. You could have two pair, you could have sets and all this. In limit hold'em, who cares, man? It's only one more bet. Re-raise, three bet, four bet. Like there are situations where you might even get to four bet with ace queen in that spot. The player, let's say for example, the player leads into you, you raise him, he three bets you, you might four bet it in position. Say, boom, pound it. I know you're on some goofy draw. You probably don't have kings or aces, and if you have a set, so what? You're gonna win a lot of chips from me and I'm never folding. That's another tip we're gonna get to about limit hold'em, which is never folding. <laughs> it makes it fun, right? You just don't ever have to fold. As a general rule, when you're thinking about how you play limit hold'em, you essentially, in opposed to no limit, is you want to value bet more and bluff less, okay? Because in limit hold'em, people are always getting a good price to pay you off on the river or to pay you off down all the way down. So um, they're gonna call you with weaker hands, so you should be betting weaker hands. There's plenty of times in limit hold'em where it actually makes sense to bet every street with ace high, like literally for value. You know, you three bet a guy, let's say for example, this hand comes, you know, nine, six, four. You know, the guy raised, you three bet him on the button, he calls. Now he checks, you bet he calls, right? Whatever, turns a four, he checks, you bet, he calls. River's a deuce. He checks. What, are you going to dog this? He ain't got no pair. Come on. See, it's not like no limit hold'em. In no limit hold'em, the guy might be checking back sevens or tens or queens and be scared. But in limit hold'em, the chances are he's got some sort of worse ace, like ace, ten, ace, jack, and he's probably going to call you. Because he knows if you're a good limit hold'em player, you're going to be three betting a lot with, you know, missed hands like jack high, queen high, king high. So he's going to get to the river and pay it off. So notice, like even ace high, we're in no limit. You're probably not value betting ace king there. I don't know many players that maybe there's some Mizzledur kind of kooky Tom Dwan Phil Ivy guys who might do that. But hey, it's over my head. So we talked about three betting, right? A little bit earlier in this video. We don't necessarily talk about why it's better to do that in, in some situations. So let's say you have ace face cards, right? Like ace jack. These hands play better heads up in position than they're going to in a multi-way pot. Um, if they're suited, again, and this is where we get into the tricky part of like sometimes it's better to flat, um, but overall as a general rule, with your entire range, it's fine to just three bet in these situations. Force the big blind out because typically if the big blind's any sort of a player, he's going to defend really wide correctly. You don't want that. You want to put the you know heat to him. So you know if you're going to play ace-jack and it's raised in front of you, don't just call to see the flop. Three bet the guy, take control of the hand. Limit hold'em is about taking control. You're throwing the jabs, you're punching, you're punching, you're punching, you're punching. Whereas like no limit is a lot more of, you know, your guard up. You gotta be careful because there's landmines everywhere. You could lose all of your chips in one hand. In limit, you're just bah, crazy. Like speed bag style. Make sense? So on that note of bah, you also wanna look at draws in the flop and play those aggressively too, okay? Um, since you're gonna be playing, you know, a lot of pairs like middle pair, even bottom pair, you might even be check raising with these hands. You also wanna do that with draws, sometimes even a gut shot, right? So sometimes if a flop comes queen eight six and you have jack nine, um, you know, you know your opponent might be betting the flop, C betting with ace 10 or ace king or something. You can check raise this flop. You're gonna call anyway, it's one bet. You can sometimes check raise this flop, hope that you catch the 10 in the middle or maybe even a jack or a nine is probably good. Maybe if your opponent calls, you bet the turn again and then you bet the river and maybe he folds. Not very often, as I said, we don't wanna like be bluffing too much, but you wanna incorporate some of that with draws because if he does have absolutely nothing, you know, he's still gonna fold. He's not gonna call you with like, you know, king high a lot of the time. He's probably gonna fold king high if you check raise this flop and he's got nothing. So you wanna play your draws, ag play your draws aggressively, especially because of the one key factor. In no limit hold them, if you play your draws a little too aggressively, sometimes you shut yourself out of the pot, right? So if, you know, you bet the flop, a guy raises you, you re-raise him with a draw, he might just re-raise you off the hand and you go, ooh, I have to fold. In limit, that's never gonna happen because it's just one more bet. And you're always getting priced in for one more bet, basically. So you wanna be more aggressive with your entire range, including draws. The other thing that's gonna make you a good limit hold'em player is, you know, not waiting for the nuts to raise on the turn in the river, okay? So a lot of situations in no limit hold'em, you know, even when you have two pair and you have sets, a lot of times you just don't raise, you're just playing them cautiously. But let's take a look at an example here where that might be true. Let's say you raise the button with eight six of diamonds and the big blind calls. The flop is nine eight three, one diamond. He checks, you bet the flop, he check raises. Well, in limit hold him, you're always gonna call. <laughs> you're just not folding, okay? Now imagine the turn card's a six and your opponent bets again. Well, in no limit hold him, with bottom two pair, you might be worried about sets, you might be worried about some goofy 7-10, you might be worried about 8-9, you might be worried about all these things, so you're like afraid to raise here, right? In limit hold'em, you just pound it. You pound it if you re-raise, re re-raises you, re-raises you, <laughs> re you, okay, so what? It only costs you one more bet. The key difference between the 
truly elite limit hold'em players is squeezing extra value out on the turn in the river. Whereas in no limit hold'em, a lot of these situations come up and people, um, because you have to protect your stack, right? You have to protect something. In limit hold'em, it's just one bet. So don't be, don't be waiting on the nuts where you, before you raise on the turn in the river. Uh, sometimes you're just gonna raise the turn with one pair, maybe even middle pair, maybe bottom pair, and then maybe even value bet it on the river. There's like, when you play at the elite level, you'll see, you know, a lot of these guys are battling with ace high, so the other guy knows it, so he's, he's got bottom pair and he's rebattling and raising turn, and it's really fun. I mean, it's just so much action. Of course, it's a different form of poker, as I said, because there's not as much bluffing, so if you're into that bluffing thing, it's not as sexy, but I will say that practicing limit hold'em is going to also improve your no limit hold'em game because it's going to make you think more aggressively right which is going to help you especially in tournament poker if you're playing no limit tournaments just playing limit hold'em and being you know accustomed to always being the aggressor and the jabber right that's going to win you a lot of pots in no limit hold'em as well you don't want to get too cuckoo like we do in limit hold'em where you're six betting the flop with top pair but as a general idea in a practice i know that every time i go back to playing limit hold'em for a little while i go back to no limit hold'em and i'm like mm, i'm stabbing a lot more and i'm picking up a lot more chips Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to limit hold'em, it's very similar to what I mentioned in the stud video. If you didn't check out the stud video, you should check out the stud video, learn how to play stud, learn how to play all the games. It's the whole point of me doing this is to teach the mixed games. Um, is on the river, in limit hold'em, you typically, let's say you're in a heads up pot, you put in three bets pre, put in a bet or two on the flop, put another couple in on the turn. <laughs> the pot is like something you can climb over. If you have anything, you pretty much have to call. Okay? Even when you know, he's like, well, I'm probably beat. I got top pair, I got middle pair, I got you know, ace high sometimes. I just gotta hope that, you know, I'm getting, I'm, uh, that he's bluffing enough to make this call correct. And often it, you know, you're getting odds up to like 10 to one. So really essentially you just need your opponent to be bluffing one out of 10 times. And most players are capable of bluffing in that range. So again, unless you really have a good read or a good reason to fold your hand, as a general rule, especially for you beginners, don't get bluffed at the river because when you do, it's a statistical nightmare, right? When you make a bad lay down in that spot, getting back all those bets, oh my God, there's like 10 bets in there. How are you gonna get those back? So as a general rule, you sleep at night much better too. You know, you sleep like a baby. You're like, okay, well, he had it. Cost you one bet. If he shows you the bluff after, <laughs> you start to have like a Phil Helmuth, you know, blow up kind of situation. We can't have that, right? There's only one Phil Helmuth, right? Nobody's gonna blow up like he does. So just call the river. Don't worry about it. Don't get bluffed. Okay. So that should cover limit hold'em. Fun game. Um, don't hate on it. No limit hold'em players. There's plenty of complexities to it. Just change your mindset. Stop thinking about robbing pots and thinking about thin value. Thin value. Just really thin value. See ya.